<laughs> All right, we'll uh, start with some opening thoughts from uh, Coach Sandlin and then take your questions for the players. Scott? Uh, first off, I want to just <clears throat> congratulate Steve and Ohio State. They had an outstanding year. Um, again, it was, again, what we expected. It was going to be a battle. We had a, obviously a great start to the game, getting a lead, and thought our first uh, two periods were very strong and a little slow in the third. And, they got the power play goal, but our guys held strong and kind of seems to be the MO with our team right now. <laughs> our program in this tournament, we've had a lot of one goal games, but real excited for our guys. Uh, it's all they've grown through the year and to be able to play in the final game of the year is, is pretty special. So uh, we're looking forward to it. All right, we'll take your questions for the players first, right here in front. Make, reminder, identify yourself each time, too, please. Rick Wigman, Duluth News Tribune. Jared, can you talk a little bit about uh, Louie getting that goal right away and then you getting the second one that was the, the turn up, turning point of the game? Yeah, it was, a, it was a huge start for us. I mean, that's been our key all, all along. When we've had success, we've had fast starts. Um, it was a great play by two freshman defensemen there um, on the goal. Uh, Louie's not quite the biggest goal scorer. No goals in high school? Nope. Right? A couple goals this year, though. Yep. Um, but, yeah, it was a great play um, all around there. And then I think we got one in, within the next couple shifts um, our line did. So, I mean, that's the 2-0 start that we wanted and the fast fast start. And um, that's when we're at our best. It's hard for teams to come back on us when we get a lead. Okay. Further questions for the players? Jess. <clears throat> Louie, your dad was a pretty good goalie. Did he try and put you in between the pipes, or have you always been a defenseman? Uh, I always started as a player. He told me you never want to sit on the bench a couple games and miss a miss opportunity in a game. And um, I begged him to put me in net, but he said it was too expensive and told me to just go play defense. <laughs> in the back there. <laughs> Meyer McAfee, ESPN, uh, for Louie, uh, do you think about obviously not just representing your university, but the league uh, against the Big Ten in the Frozen Four here? Uh, yeah, it's always fun being the only team from the NCHC in this tournament. I mean, our league's a tough league, and every night you got to come up and show up and play. And then leading into the Big Ten, playing them too, they have a tough league and got some good teams in there. And then we still have to come out and play our best. Okay. Question for Louis. Um, your dad was in Identify attendance Identify yourself, tonight. please. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Osterosh, UnityBulldogs.com. Your dad was in attendance tonight from uh, – up here from Arizona. It's the first time he's seen you play collegiately. Uh, what did it mean to have him see you tonight and even score a goal in the biggest stage of college hockey? Nah, it was a good time. I mean, good seeing him on the red carpet. I haven't seen him in a while. It was good. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, he's watched on nchctv.com. I mean, that was great, too. So he's been watching me all year. Right here in the front. Dave Hendrickson, USCHO. This is for both of you. Your team was the last team to, to make it into the, into the tournament. It was, it was really, really close. Uh, and yet over the last five, six years, a couple of those teams have won national championships. Can you just talk about perhaps embracing that underdog role and, uh, and coming and, and knocking off higher seeds? Jared. Yeah, I think uh, when you're fighting for your life there um, to get in the tournament, you're kind of playing playoff hockey. Um, a couple weeks earlier than everyone else and you just kind of get on a run and and keep it going and figure out how to play um, tough close games like that and we've had I think every game we've had in our last four or five six games have been one goal games and um, I think just the fact that we had to crawl and scratch our way from basically the bottom at the start of the season to where we are now it's it's been a heck of a run that we've put together and um we're going to hopefully come out on Saturday and finish it off. Louis. Oh, yeah, just adding to what he said. I mean, we've been battling all year to get a spot in the tournament, and it's been great to see our team come together as one and really trust in each other and believe that we can do it. And that's what you see us do here today. Uh, we uh, worked hard as a collective group, and things turned out well. Actually, you guys probably saw this. Since 2013, the last uh, at-large team in – is 14 and 3 in the tournament. That's, uh, that's pretty remarkable. All right, front here, Jim. 
Thank you uh, for Louis. Could no, you, could you us, identify uh, Jim Connolly from U.S. College Hockey Online? My apologies, uh, uh, Louis. Could you take us through the shot on your goal? It looked like you wanted to release it, maybe bobbled for a millisecond, but then you got it. That seemed to get the goalie a little bit out of position. Yeah, I mean, Maddie made a great play. I think everyone in the arena thought he was going to shoot the puck, and he slid it over to me, and I caught it. And took picked my head up. Maybe it took a little long to get the release off, but just made sure the goalie wasn't there and uh, just shot it in and. It was all good. Okay, front here, Oliver. Oliver Francis from Seymour Sports. Uh, for for Louis or Jared, uh, how did that the Air Force game you guys had to deal with in Sioux Falls, where you get out to a big start, then you kind of have to fend them off the rest of the game? How did that mentally prepare you guys for kind of a similar style of game tonight, Jared? Yeah, it was a fairly, I mean, pretty similar game if you look at it. Um, got off to that 2-0 lead and. Um, I thought we still played well. We weren't really defending for our lives. We only gave up 11 shots through two periods, I think. So we were pretty pretty effective that way. And uh, we just couldn't get that third goal. I mean, we've had plenty of chances. And we just couldn't really get that one to kind of step on their throat there. But um, all in all, I think we, we did well and managed the game. Killed off some big penalties there until um, they squeaked one in. But um, it was a great 60 minutes for us. Um, we would have liked to obviously get that third goal. and get a bigger lead, but I mean, we like making it interesting, so um, we'll take it. Oh uh, Yeah, adding to what he said, I mean, it's always hard to put teams away. Uh, they come out in the second period when we get a lead and they fight hard, they fight for their season. So when we try to end teams, I mean, they make a big push, but I think we kind of weathered the storm well and our defense has been great this year, so that's been working for us to hold our own in our zone. And our forwards have been great on the four check too, so we cr create some havoc down there. And then, yeah, I mean, it all works out and, yeah. Okay, Chris. Uh, Chris Lynch from, from Inside Hockey, this is for Jared. You just talk mm -hmm. about uh, Carson's play throughout this tournament. He gave you the pass in uh, that set up your goal, which was a great long pass. And he's the one of the old leaders on a team with a lot of young talent, just what he's meant on the ice and, and off of the culture of the team. <clears throat> yeah, it's, I mean, kind of sound like a broken record, but that's why he's our captain. I mean, he does things that that get the boys um, going. He He's always that spark that we need when we need it. Um, made a great pass to me on that goal. Um, it's really nice playing with a guy like that, obviously. Um, he does all the right things. and. Um, it, it, you can't really put into words what he brings to our team inside the locker room and, and even off the rink. But, I mean, I think you can tell what he does on the rink and you can see the type of guy he is. Okay. Chad Graff with The Athletic. Jared, what's it been like to be on a team this young and, and now uh, to have so many teammates that weren't on last year's run and don't know what Saturday's game is going to be like? Yeah, it's... <laughs> It's pretty remarkable that um, getting back to this game, um, clearly, obviously, last year we had a much older group. Um, expectations were super high. And this year, it's complete opposite, I guess, as, as in the age standpoint, we had a young group, kind of had to figure out our identity and how we wanted to play and how we wanted to win hockey games. And I think after Christmas break, we figured out how um, we were going to be successful. And uh, it's... Uh, Playing in another national championship game, I mean, it, it, I don't think it's really set in yet. But um, in the end, it's just another hockey game, last hockey game of the season, last hockey game of my college career. And and I know everyone in our in our locker room is going to do everything they can to, to finish at the top. Okay. Anything else for the players? We good? Okay, guys, we'll let you go. Congratulations. Thanks Thank very you. much. Thank you. And uh, we'll finish with your questions for Coach, Coach Sandlin, okay? In front here. Jess. Jesse Pierce, NHL.com. Talk about the impact that Dylan Sandberg has had for your team this year. Um, he's had a big impact. Uh, it's been fun to, to watch that whole group grow. Um, I think uh, he's, since he's come back, from the World Juniors, he's he's really elevated his play. I think the last three or four games, I thought he was outstanding in Sioux Falls. I thought he was our best defenseman. But tonight, again, played the same way. Um, a lot more confidence, you know, learning. Like all those guys, it's been a learning curve. Um, but they relish those games, you know. Uh, it's funny, they they don't really 
they don't panic. Uh, you know, they just they just kind of play. But it's it's been really fun to watch him along with that whole group just kind of grow. And like I said, we let him make mistakes early, and you know, I think that's how you. We knew we were going to have to play all those those kids, and it's been fun. And we're reaping the benefits of it, I guess. But he was he was good again tonight. Scott Sandlin now 16 and 6 in the NCAA tournament. Jess? Jess Myers, USA Hockey Magazine. Was it somehow appropriate with all the talk about your young defense that the first goal is rail from Anderson <laughs> and, and, you know, and the impact those guys have had when that was supposed to be kind of the Achilles heel? Um, maybe. Uh, truthfully, Jess, I don't care who scored it. It was just nice to get one. <laughs> it was nice to get that start. Uh, it was nice to add to it. And again, like Jared alluded to, it's the last couple games, we, we've had opportunities to get the third goal, but we, we haven't. And, you know, uh, we've managed to, to still win those games, but it would have been nice to maybe get that third one. I'm not saying the result you know, still would have been maybe a win. I don't know, but it would have been nice to just add a little bit to that. But it was it was just important that we had a good start. And this team has started, I, I would say, 75, 80 percent of the games this year. We, we've had a good, good start. Um, and that was another key tonight was was getting that quick start and, and, and playing with the lead. OK, further questions right here. Oliver Francis from Seymour Sports. Coach, um, talk about all of the one goal games, all the tough games you guys have had to go through. How has that kind of uh, prepared you guys mentally for uh, this stage? I'd like to think it's helped us. I mean, obviously it's great when you win them, uh, but you know, we've, we've had a lot of, we're not a, we're not a super high powered offensive team. Um, I, I think the big, the big change for our team are, are we, we've played much better defense in the last month and a half, two months. I mean, Shep, Shep's been a big part of that, but um, I think you saw tonight too. I, you know, they didn't, they didn't have a lot. Uh, the third period, you know, we were careless with the puck early and then they got some power play opportunities and, but we didn't give them a, a lot of a lot of looks, and it was the same thing the last you know last few games. And um, but you know for me it's it's what you expect. I expected that tonight. I mean two good defensive teams. Um, both teams can score, um, but I expected it to be a tight, low-scoring game. Okay, Chad, then John. All right, this is John, then Chad. Okay. All right, whatever, that's fine, either or. John Gilbert from the Duluth Reader. Scott, mm -hmm. it's been great watching that young defense just play so consistently all year. I don't know if you had a good look at the last 10 seconds, but I think you had uh, uh, Sandberg on his hands and knees groveling in the corner. Might be the first time groveling in the corner and protecting the puck could make your highlight film. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to see it again, because I, I thought the time ran out, but... Um, I guess we had to celebrate twice again. It reminded me of last weekend, so um, I wasn't sure why the West, you know, what happened. But I'll have to look at it, John, and we'll talk about it. All right, Chad. Chad Graff with The Athletic. Scott, just to put it simply, how in the heck did you lose half of your lineup from last year and, and get your program back to the national championship game? Chad, I don't know. <laughs> um, you know what? Um, you just don't know. Uh, you know, we we knew we had some good freshmen coming in. You know, we we had big question marks. There's no question about that. So I think even with with a lot of people, there was doubt, and uh, it's something we talked about. Um, I talked about at length with some of our older players. You know, that trust us. You know, but it takes time for those kids to to get used to college hockey. Every weekend was a new experience for our first, you know, our freshmen. Um, but we had a good. We had, we had, our forward group, we had a lot of depth coming back. We didn't have maybe, like I said, the, the big offensive line or, the, or the, the, like some teams do, but we had balance. And, and, and I think that started to show in the second half. And, and, you know, again, we have 26 players on our team, and those guys have all contributed this year. Um, when we had injuries, when we, when we had guys at the World Junior, um, and that, that was kind of where things turned a little bit. But, uh, I mean, I couldn't be more proud of this group. Like we sat here three weeks ago and we thought our season was done. And I would have, and I think I said it, it would have sucked for our seniors to end it that way because we didn't give ourselves a chance to win those games. And we went back and got lucky and I think it gave us a second life and here we are. And you know what, uh, 
maybe they're just so young they don't know any better. But um, I'm really excited for guys like Jared and Carson. You know, the those guys, uh, all of our seniors, and you know, it's a great experience for our younger players to go through because they really understand how hard it is. It's hard to get to the Frozen Four. It's hard to get into the national tournament. It's hard to win your league. College hockey is so good right now that that's why you're seeing, you know, close games and, you know, I don't even call it. I don't think there's any upsets anymore because I think the parity is so good. But um, all I know is I'm elated for our, our program. I'm ex super excited for our players to have an opportunity to play on Saturday. Mark. Scott Meyer, Metcalf, ESPN. How much do you value not only just representing your program, but representing your league, especially uh, against a team in the national title game from the Big Ten, the league that kind of shook things up when it was formed a few years ago? Well, I certainly take a lot of pride in it. You know, we came here with a lone NCHC team. We've had uh, more than that. Like, obviously, last year, us and Denver were in the final game. So that was, uh, that was pretty cool for our league, and Denver won. We won the last two uh, with North Dakota the year before. So... Um, you know, we're gonna we take a lot of pride in it, and uh, we're just happy we won tonight. And you know, we're gonna end up playing another Big Ten school. So uh, right now, I really don't care who that is. I just I'm excited for our players, and we're looking forward to playing. It doesn't matter what league it is, but they've had a tremendous year too. So give them credit. And our league was strong again too. We we were just the lone survivors to to get into the tournament, and we're still playing. So we're gonna take try and take advantage of it. Dave. Dave Hendrickson, USCHO. Mm -hmm. You spoke a little bit on this, but you, can you just contrast the emotions you felt as you were sweating out, making out the turn, making in, making it into the tournament, mm -hmm. versus now being uh, one game away from the national championship? Well, I, I sat in the front of the bus, checked my phone here and there, looking at two games that the Princeton and BU game. Those didn't go our way. And then someone brought up uh, the fact that there was another opportunity, another scenario. So. I'm like, really? Okay, good. So we, guys are watching it on their computers. I didn't really look in the back of the bus. And we got home, and we got there just in time to, to see the end of the Ohio State-Notre uh, Dame game. Um, watch it from my office. Uh, they won. I had a beer, and that's exactly what I did. <laughs> and it was a pretty dramatic bus ride home. Um, but I'll tell you, I, I think that the way we got in, was was really an eye opener for our guys because they knew it could have been done, and I think it, you know, gave them a second life and again a new opportunity, and and they've taken advantage of it. So give those guys credit. Okay, right here, guys. Uh, Sean David, SP Nation, uh, Coach, you're in the national championship game, mm -hmm. second year in a row. You're playing in the same venue where you won your first title a number of years back. Um, you guys were feeding off the crowd at numerous points tonight. What kind of advantage do you think that's going to give you on Saturday night? I hope it gives us a big advantage because I mean, I remember in '11 when we came out there, the building was electric. It was, it was. You could feel it in warm up, and I hope it's the same way because uh, I, I thought that game was an outstanding hockey game, and I expect the same thing Saturday. So it's great that it's close. It's great that we got a lot of our Bulldog fans here, and maybe some people that have jumped on board. But I want more, and hopefully we can get this building really loud and pulling for us. So it was, but it was a lot of fun in '11. So. I expect it to be the same thing because we've got some tremendous fans. Okay, Jess. <clears throat> Jesse Pierce, NHL.com. Mm -hmm. um, Nick Sweeney looked really mm -hmm. solid tonight. How have you really seen him grow as a player and, and develop in, in this first year? Uh, real well. I mean, he, he started, then he had injury. Um, he's kind of been interrupted a couple, you know, his momentum through the season has been interrupted with some injuries, but, uh, you know, now that he's back here, probably the last month, I think he's starting to play like he did early before he kind of got hurt and at different stages. So it's hard, you know, I mean, kids get on kind of that role, role and, you know, he's scored goals. I mean, he scored over 60 goals in the USHL before he came. So we felt he could be an, and was going to be an impact player for us offensively and, and started well and then missed some time and then kind of got back to it and missed some more time. And now he's scored some big goals for us and played real well. Uh, here in the last month. So uh, I thought that line again was was really good. Uh, they've been really good for us here the last three, four games. OK. Uh, Coach Sandlin, thanks very much. Congratulations. Thanks, Next game starts at 845, gang. Thanks a lot.